Well, hello my friends. Welcome back to my shop. This is Alfred Tardo, the Rebel Turner. Uh, this today is uh, probably not the best day for me to be out in the shed. Not only because it's raining outside, but because I was going to be turning this beautiful piece of um, bottle washer that I picked up yesterday. And I knew it was problematic right from the beginning. And uh, I was going at it, and today I was just doing a little bit, and I was going to continue with the video, and it blew up. embedded in between uh, the, the different branches that used to come out of it. So, of course, it blew up, but I am not or was not in any danger. Uh, because when I'm roughing, I'm not in front of the lake. Uh, you know, I'm going to talk about that a little bit. And I've said this before, and people probably think I'm a little weird. How can I possibly think that the lake is less dangerous than any other tool. And it's not that it's any less dangerous. As a matter of fact, we all know the dangers that are behind the lake. But I have a tendency to always get hurt on the easiest of tools. I've got to hurt on my drill press. Why? Because we take it for granted that it's really not all that dangerous. I've gotten hurt on a table saw, even though we know the dangers of table saw. I've gotten hurt pretty badly with that. I got hurt this week with a little handheld power drill. Drilling true metal, it caught up, it caught my this finger, the ring finger on the wrong hand. Anyway, it did a little tune-up on me. It, the swelling is finally going down, but, you know, it's, it's pretty rough. So the point is, the more we are aware of a tool being really dangerous that can do some serious harm, we are always aware of that and therefore are always or should always be somewhat in, on guard not fear it because fear itself can create a big problem but we should respect it and we should know that that danger is always there and subconsciously always be thinking of that possibility and now we got split the town on me that I was going to burn it all and I'm glad I didn't because I got some amazing amazing pieces out of it but the way it was rough cut from the chainsaw, I decided to put it up on the lathe exactly the way it was. And I started shaping it. And with the shaping, it, I saw something a little bit different. I didn't start recording this from the beginning because I wasn't going to make anything special about it. Uh, it was going to be another cherry bowl. I've done many cherry bowls, whether it was going to be a platter or a bowl or whatever. It, it was just going to be a, a typical didn't turn out to be a typical thing. Looking at the shape, I decided, whoa, I'm going to take it off the, uh, the lathe and I'm going to rough cut it on my bandsaw and then fine tune it on my table saw. And here's where I met. I haven't done that much, but this is what I got. Like I said, I took it to the uh, took it off at the state that it's in right now. Took it to the bandsaw and cut it into a diamond shape. I have a slab. A lot of times I use the worm screw, and that's how this is mounted on. It's mounted on a worm screw. It's nice and tight. What that allows me is to work without the live center. Now I worked with a live center in place throughout the roughing of this, but I took it off to uh, make this mortise and start working on here. 
these dark streaks that you see going through here is because there's a little bit of checking they're fine check lines so i always have to be careful with this piece so it doesn't split especially when i put it into the jaws under expansion mode expansion will pull away it could possibly do some damage over here why did i even do a mortise when i know that in compression on a tenon it would assure me that this will uh, stay true to the end that's one of those things you do and you wonder was there a reason why i did it this way will it justify me any better and at this point i can honestly say no i should have made a tenon on this because of these checks but I'm going to continue and go carefully once I do the flip over and uh, see how it goes. These are my 5.8 Hurricane Gold Gouge. And uh, you can see this huge check going right through the middle even though I got a little bit of webbing in here which helps me out a little bit but this check goes in pretty deep over here so I really do have to be careful I'm gonna go in there at the beginning fairly aggressive and uh, stop bringing the weight of this down gotta go a little bit and uh, I'll see how it's clearing up on this before I decide how thin I want to make it uh, because I might want to come out a little bit more from the bottom on this but that's starting to look pretty good I'm just about on the inside of this area here and again I will also decide on what I'm doing with this whether if I'm bringing it all the way down which I probably will
Well, this will determine that I definitely am going all the way down here since this piece right here, not because of a catch, but because of the the wood, the nature and, and the little check that was going in there. Unless I glue it back in, and I think I'm going to glue it in. I hate when things force me to go to a direction that that's not what I had in mind. And I had in mind to keep a little bit of a border, an edge on this. Alright, I'm going to let this stay on for about 10 minutes. Get that glue to really penetrate both sides. I mean, it is 10 CA, but uh, 10 CA doesn't fill voids. So I'm relying on the, uh, the fibers to get saturated and lock up. This been here for a little while. So, time to go in here a little bit longer and uh, kind of work on the shape a little bit longer. Now I have to be careful so pieces don't fly off on this. Still very likely. give you the best cut but you can always do a sheer scrape turn your tool quite a bit with a flute almost parallel to your feet and just come in there and follow your tool rest that's why it's important this is why it's important to kind of place your tool rest pretty much on the same angle as your piece so when you're going in you're following up the line the same profile as your tool so the thickness is beginning to look pretty good I do see this check opened up over here which I mentioned early on that there's a possibility especially being under 
expansion mode there's always a possibility of this piece wanting to do something that I don't want it to do so examine your piece frequently check for any sort of weaknesses on the wood and stand out of the line of fire if there's even when there isn't a doubt uh, you should always be out of the line of fire when you're doing turning and the dangers of the turning is when you're actually going pretty fast like I'm going right now uh, the lathe is probably going at around uh, I haven't looked at it but probably a thousand rpms or so or close to that so I don't want to be anywhere where any of these pieces can fly off and hit me so stand off to the side and work it in now also be careful with your elbow making sure that you're not forgetting those wings as you're going in so stand off the back stand off the the line of fire and keep your hand and everything on this side of the tool rest don't don't be forgetful and come out here it could be devastating on the damage that it could uh, cause so I always urge you please be careful don't be afraid of the lathe but respect the lathe and always be aware of your surroundings and what you're doing that is the key. Now, there's one area here that I'm a little disappointed. This little piece has flown away and it's gonna force me to come up to slightly, about a quarter of an inch thickness in all of this. So on that, I'm going to do a couple of sheer scrapes on this, see if I can get to that down. I think this is working out pretty good. Now I've applied a little bit of Yorkshire grit when uh, my video card was full and that's all I've done since the last sanding that I was doing. Sand it to 400 and uh, some fine steel wool. 
it's time to apply OB Shine Juice. And for those of you who want to know what OB Shine Juice is, um, I've mentioned it many times, but uh, if you're new to the channel, or to its turning, it's a mixture of shellac, boiled linseed oil, and denatured alcohol in equal amounts. Um, so basically I put one third in that bottle, one third of shellac, one third of denatured alcohol, and one third of boiled linseed oil, shake it up, and it's my favorite finish. It's a finish that I use uh, probably 99% of the time. And uh, the Yorkshire grit is something that uh, also I've been constantly using since it became available to me. And uh, it makes for a great combination. Cherry platter. It's time to remove it off the chuck and uh, reverse it so I can get the very bottom of this. Now it has this a mortise on the bottom, so I'm not going to have to cut anything on it other than buff it pretty much. Now, because I want to mount it this way, and generally I use my life center, which would have a point, and it would uh, make an indent. But if I use my life center that's missing the point, and line it up, pretty good. Even if it makes a mark, it just creates an additional ring to it. So that's what I'm going to do in this case. find the center uh, rather than this so you know when you have a system a system that works for you um, not saying don't try new uh, ideas but if your system is working for you then that's the system you need to stay with and uh, not necessarily what somebody else is showing you And the example is, you know, I generally make a tenon and I have no problem finishing up the bottom. I made a mortise on this one and uh, it gave me a little bit of trouble on that. Now here it is, checking an oil. It's got this uh, check mark that's going through here, which was here from the beginning of the wood, which is built in the front and the back. There's no light going through it, but it was one of those areas that I was always aware and always on a lookout, making sure that it didn't fly out on me. And by standing out of the line of fire, putting CA every once in a while inside of those check marks, and just doing whatever I could to uh, keep it. 
and also always aware that it could fly off even with all the precautions that I was taking so just because you take the precautions don't get uh, don't get yourself off guard and go in there crazy I stopped it quite a few times looked at it put CA even rubbed sawdust in it so if there was any gap that at least some sawdust would uh, create some fibers in between um, but it is unique piece a little different from the normal it's not per se it's uh, you know wow it's a completely different thing but it's nice I like this uh, the fact that this was cut on the chainsaw uneven and that in itself is what generated the idea it was very close to this I just trued it up like I said first on the bandsaw and then I decided well I want to make them all parallel to each other so I went against the fence established one side and as soon as one side was established then you just follow from there but established one side put that one fence cut to the other side and so on and so forth and did all the four sides parallel to each other creating this diamond shape so this is what came up out of it and I am not disappointed that you know you lose one you gain one and that's the whole thing behind it. here it is diamond shaped black thanks again we'll see you